Today we're going to talk about heat projectors and are they good for reptiles? In particular, leopard geckos. Now, leopard geckos seem to be giving them a lot. Now, to gauge whether these are good, we need to compare them to the gold standard, which is the sun. In sunlight, there is UV, infrared, and visible light. But in particular, we're going to focus on infrared. Now, we break infrared down into three subcategories. Infrared A, B, and C. Let me show you the reality of this situation. But before we do that, those of you that are really into this and understand what you're looking at, I just want to say that this doesn't take into account small things like glass attenuation or emissivity, but little factors like that don't really make a huge difference to the point we're trying to make, and that's comparing heat projectors to sun, or at least at the scale that we're looking at. So what we're looking at here is a spreadsheet made by Serena Vanderlick, and you can actually download this from her website. So what we're looking at here is sunlight, a halogen lamp, and a heat projector. Sunlight's represented as this green bit, the blue bit is a halogen incandescent, and the orange bit is a heat projector. For the sake of this example, we're showing a heat projector at 800 Kelvin and a halogen at 2500. So both the heat projector and this halogen incandescent are timed up so that we can see it. So as you can see, the green bar here is sunlight. It starts over here with UV up into the visible light spectrum. The visible light spectrum is from 400 to around sort of like 700 to 800. You see it peaking here, and then we're getting into infrared, which is 800 to around 1,400 is infrared A. So this is the particular part we're looking at getting into our basking spot. What you can see here is our incandescent halogen is filling in this spot quite nicely. There's a bit of visible light from a halogen, which you can see that coming into the visible light spectrum here. Also come up into infrared A, it peaks around this area here from 800 to 400. So from here to here, it's peaking and it's sitting there and filling that out quite nicely. If we compare that to a heat projector, you can really see it. It's not really representing infrared A at all. You can see it starting around here, around 1400. So 1400 to 3000 is infrared B. So you can see it's starting, it's licking, it's literally licking into infrared A, but then coming up into infrared B. Compare that to what a incandescent and the sun is giving, it's actually miles off. It's not peaking in the areas where, like the sun is. Actually, it's doing things that are actually really unnatural. So if I times this up now, and I times it up by, I times it up by 5,000, you can really see where it's really just starting around the starting area where it should be peaking, but it's peaking in the wavelengths that are the lowest in sunlight. So it's really actually unnatural compared to sunlight. And obviously with our basking spots, we want our lights to be giving us as close to sunlight as possible. Now there is infrared B and C coming from the sun and you can see infrared B here in sunlight. So it is there. So you might say, well, why don't we provide a heat projector to give those wavelengths like the sun does? But actually, if you look at the incandescent, the incandescent around here is already giving us the infrared B. So it basically makes the heat projector obsolete. So any marketing terms you might see around heat projectors, them being more biologically available, or it outperforms an incandescent, whatever that means, it's totally unnatural. It's nothing like sunlight. It's not even matching what an incandescent halogen can do. If we look at what it produces in terms of infrared A, it's actually 0.1%. It's basically nothing. So if you were to round that off and you would say 0%, you would say it doesn't even produce infrared A. Just a reminder, we have times this up. If I take this back and I take both the incandescent and the heat projector down to a times of one on this spectrum, let's have a look. The heat projector is nowhere to be seen, but the, that incandescent halogen, even at scale factor of one, is still there and it is still peaking in the wavelengths that we want it to. So heat projectors are nothing like sunlight. Reptiles will bask under the sun for a number of health benefits. They can do it when they're sick to help with healing. They can do it to manage parasites. And yes, they do it to warm up, but that certainly isn't the only reason. So when heat projectors are entirely unnatural and nothing like sunlight, can we really call it basking? Using a heat projector for basking is like using a lava lamp for visible light during the day. 
is simply just unnatural. And because the wavelengths are heating up the water and fat in skin significantly, it takes a lot longer to warm up the animal's core. This means the animal would need to sit under a heat projector a lot longer than they would normally do like the sun or an incandescent, effectively drying them out. Now, bring this back to leopard geckos, considering how thin a leopard gecko's skin is, I would not be putting a heat projector anywhere near a leopard gecko. The original marketing of these products was that if you had that as a sole heat source, it would provide basking during the day and then heat at night. And because it doesn't produce any lights, you could have your, your UV or your, your LED provide the light during the day. And you could just turn that on and off. And you could just have that heat projector providing that warmth 24 seven because you're providing the photo period in terms of something else, flicking it on and off. But the kicker is there is no infrared B present at nighttime in nature. So not only are these heat projectors unnatural for basking during the day, but they're entirely unnatural for nighttime too. So the question is, why are we even using this? And now pet shops sell these things as the next best thing. The best thing since sliced bread. They're better than an incandescent. They're the best thing that you can use to heat your reptile. Selling them with tortoises, uromastics, bearded dragons, varanus, because they've been led to believe these things heat like the sun. And as I showed you earlier, they are nothing like the sun. I actually have five heat projectors in the attic gathering dust because they ain't going anywhere near my reptiles. So if you're setting up a leopard gecko's basking spot, use an incandescent basking lamp because a heat projector is not suitable.